Um, we've used MOUs with mints. Um, what I found in Southeast Asia is that a lot of groups, once they get that MOU signed, um, they assume that they are an affiliate of mints. They are um, um, a part of part of mints rather than being kind of their own group with mints coming alongside them. And so uh, what I've suggested is that uh, with sister organizations, um, for instance, with what Carla Stevens is doing, um, an MOU would be appropriate there because it's like two organizations working together, right? <clears throat> but with other um, local study centers, um, we should probably have something different. Yeah, Carla? For it, if we proceed oh, with this. Or I can't you... hear you. Um, I'm not muted. Um, let me get the... Can, can you hear me now? I can hear okay. her. I can hear her just fine. <laughs> okay, Norlin hear me is a question. Uh, my, my question is, if, I don't know, maybe somebody should write it, but if we proceed, any of us proceed with memorandums, should we make a point that we should clear these with you or with Julian or somebody before we sign them, right? Okay, nobody in that room can hear me? Everybody else can, I guess. Yeah. I don't know why they can hear. Uh, Carla, we can hear you. Um, and we got your question. Now you're muted again for some reason. Um, I'm, I'm not. Okay. No, she's not. Okay, good. We can hear you. We got your question. Uh, yeah, the, the, MO, the, the MOUs have to be, have to be, have to be done. Um, so I'm going to, I'll let Norman, Norman speak to it, but, but they do have to be signed, obviously, by somebody or they have to be agreed by somebody. I think, I think someone uh, from the Academic Executive Committee ought to be a signature on MOUs. Yes, they have, we have to. I mean, it, so, it, it either has to be the country, the, the area, co the, the, the region coordinator, the regional coordinator, which would have to be me for the English side at the moment. Yeah. Or it has to be you from the academic side. Yeah. Um, I, I would just say someone from the academic executive committee. That's that. that makes sense, Carla? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, a format to follow or a template of some sort that you followed that you could make available to us? Um, Julian has, you know, Julian created a template that I use when I create MOUs. Um, and it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Um, essentially, it's just listing uh, mints and the name of the other organization, then uh, what mints can expect uh, from the organization and what the organization can expect from mints. So, Carla, your MOU, which is done and dusted, right? It's 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 done and completed. Was probably more detailed than we do with other MOUs. But the, and that was the that was the MOU between PS seventy eight teachers and you. But what right. about but, what about an MOU with um, same thing same Malawi thing. Seminary, for example? Do we with need who, something with there Malawi. with the Malawi Seminary if we start working with them, or is that already kind of done? I don't think we need to add another one because what you would say is according to our MOU, Mintz has agreed that this is a valid Mintz course structure and you're falling under the Mintz structure. So there's nothing else. You know, if they happen. wanted a copy, you could send them a copy, but otherwise you, you're in the fold if you follow me. So you're in the fold, you're in the fold. That, that, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to do anything else. Okay. Our, but our work with maybe with the African Renewal University is almost totally apart from this because they are doing it under them They're, they are putting the degree in their university and it's not so 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 well, then then you probably want to do an mou between your organization and them if it's right. part of the picture we don't need to be signing it well i mean there is a sense in which my courses are mints courses so right so so the mou awesome. 
Yeah, the MOU this is a little bit weird, right? So the MOU that we have is between ourselves and Carla. The, that, the, the rules of the MOU are always pretty much exactly follow the catalog, okay? That's the bottom line. You know what I mean? That, that is the bottom line, follow the catalog, right? And so we've addressed the issues with Carla about she had a number of courses which were going to be mints courses. She had a number of courses which were not yet mints courses, but were pure educational courses. So she's taken those educational courses and rolled them over and given us PDFs, which are not standard mints, but they meet our criteria for what we're doing. And then so long as then Carla, I, and then so when Carla takes that, and joins it to X. Um, basically, Carla is operating for mints under those circumstances. And it's because you're operating according to our catalog, right? So I don't think there's a next one, another one, except for you need to make it very clear to those students that that who you're operating with and how the what the, the, the degree protocol is. And right. then from our side, you would be responsible for their registrations. Right. And that's well, something I actually want to talk about with the registrations. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we have to talk this through too, I think <laughs> a little bit, but, but go ahead, go ahead. No, it's, it's useful because we can talk it through now at one level and get those sorts of things sorted out. Because they are granting the degree. They are registering them. They are granting the degree. They are accrediting our courses and so making the their own. So the question then, so the question then is, is do they want a degree out of us at the same time? Because, oh. if they don't, because that's the only thing that we would add to this party, right? If you, right. if you do that, they can issue a degree, we can issue a degree, but we're only prepared to issue a degree when we're within the catalog and the students are registered properly. So you can have two degrees. That's not our, that's not a problem. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they're interested in that or not. We'll, we have a meeting next Tuesday, so we'll so find the question, out. The question for you would be, are you interested in it because it'll help with your numbers? Well, it, it opens up the entire Ugandan teacher population to get an accredited degree. What, you and, mean they're from them? Yeah. Or from, from you? From, from them. I'm giving them my courses, not giving them, but they're, we're supervising them and, and they're doing it online with us, but it's just a whole nother thing. And I don't, uh, it gets a little. Do you want, do you want, do you, do you want to claim their numbers as your own as well? That's the only question. If you want to claim their numbers as your own as well, then follow our protocols and then they get their numbers and you get your numbers. If you want to just, with through just, mints, if you want to claim them through mints, if you follow me, if you don't want to claim those right. through mints, then it's just you and them, and we don't need to be part of that. Okay. Is that, is that, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Just, yeah. Just, just on the one point that I want to bring up, because it's come up a bit recently, and I'm still trying to find my PDF documents that I had all my lists on. Um, one of them that has come up just recently on this whole area of MOUs is at the end of, our MOU and in our catalogs, we are a non-profit charity and we do not enter into any legal obligations, all right? And I'm, I, we didn't have it on earlier, um, we didn't have it on earlier versions of the MOUs, but in the most recent MOU I sent out, I can't even remember where I sent it to, but um, I, I sent out a recent, oh yeah, I, I can't remember where I sent it to now. Oh, uh, Addis Ababa. Um, and they wanted an MOU, and in big black letters, like second from last, it was Mince is a nonprofit, it's a charity, we do not charge for these courses, and Mince, this is, there is no li legal liability. And, and I, I bring that up um, because um, we have, uh, we, firstly, from a Mince point of view, that is our position, right? There's no legal obligation between us and any of these institutions, that's it. So. We, we give our stuff away and whatever that local group wants to do, that's the local group. But, but where, the, where the problem has come, um, where, the, where, where the problem has come is, let me give you an example in Cameroon um, just recently that, that Cameroon was running their centers somewhere between a nonprofit and a profit. And that's okay, we, we allow them to charge 
if that's the way they're going to try and do it. I actually actively encourage students not to do it. I would rather that they spent longer not I'd rather they spent longer doing the courses than try and employ a guy full time to run mints as a job out there. I, 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 just because we've created a dependency situation right from the beginning. And I would rather that they spent, and also remember that from my point of view, and this might sound strange, but from my point of view, mints exists to serve the church. It does not exist in its own right. We, you know what I mean? So we get graduates, so what do we do, right? So, so what we want is that. Now what's happened in Cameroon is we tried to mail documents from here and they they didn't get there uh we then tried to mail documents twice actually uh from 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 the us they didn't get there so i got hold of a sister organization in london who were getting books and things through and said how are you doing it they said we're mailing them from the royal mail so i went over to the royal mail in london when i was in london and I mailed them using Royal Mail, put where I wanted to go with a tracking number. They said, these documents are going to Cameroons. So we were watching the tracking number and we're glad to report that they ended up in Cambodia. <laughs> so now the problem, you know, C and C, Royal Mail, it's only a first world country. You'd think that they could sort that one out, but obviously not. Um, but the, the, now the problem is he's under pressure because one of his students is graduating and wanting to take that degree amongst other things and go to Canada to do further studies. And so he's now threatening to sue the local center, right? So, so now we've, we've addressed part of that already um, and we'll address more of it when it comes on. I mean, I have to write him a pretty stern letter, number one. Um, but I, as, as far as I'm, I'm as, as of today, they sent them back to Cameroon and now somewhere in England, my father, who's 90, is going to be going down to the mail to try and get them to resend them back to Cameroon. He said, well, why don't we use DHL instead? Because DHL haven't been any better when we've sent them from the UK. So that's why I just, you know, one of the things about legal obligations, you know, and I, I, I actually did also get, I got hold of the, the coordinator there and said, hey, you know, we don't want you to build this out in a legal way. We are giving you stuff, but... Be, be very careful how you get involved in this. So um, that was just a, a, a side, Norm. Do you, you want to drop in? Because I'm slowly remembering all the things. I'm slowly remembering all the things. Yeah. All right. Uh, in, in my estimation, MOUs are unique to the relationship between Mints and whatever sister organization it's, it's seeking to work with, right? And so the MOU is going to look different. So it's going to look different. Um, Carla, yours is going to look different than someone else that we you know work with an MOU with. Um, again, it's it's kind of the sister organization connection uh, with the MOU. Um, what I've been finding in uh, Southeast Asia is that we need some sort of vehicle that's not going to quite rise to the level of MOU, but is still going to define how we're going to work together. And that's what I've suggested would be five year agreements. So that uh, when I work with a local center, when I start a new local center and work with a pastor there, um, I would suggest a five-year agreement between Mints and that local study center. Um, I, want a, I want an end date on the five-year agreement so that I'm, I'm saying, we're committing to working with you for five years. And if things go really well, we'll start another five-year agreement five years from now, right? Um, but that gives us a way out of the agreement if if we think we need to do that. Um, the five-year agreement, again, would be very simple. It would simply be, uh, this is what you can expect from Mints. This is what Mints can expect from you, all right? Um, but it would have that end date on it. Um, and so it would be, um, it, it wouldn't be quite the level of an MOU, but it would have some um, connection between how we're gonna work with that particular study center. Um, study centers can work differently. Some are seeking MINS degrees. Uh, some, uh, one center I work with in Nepal uh, offers two different, uh, it, it'll offer degrees from MINS if they wanna uh, uh, go that route, or they can have a local study center, the Bakhtapur Theological Seminary degree um, that they can have. So um, a five-year agreement would spell out those kind of issues. Um, in Pakistan, uh, I don't think they're using the full mints uh, courses, um, 
but they're they're free to use our materials. And so we would we would um, have that in there as well. I think also with a five year agreement, um, I would put in there that Mints would do an academic audit at these local centers and try to do that at least once a year. Um, that could be done by me or Julian or who, or whoever, or if we have a national coordinator, the national coordinator could do academic audits for that um, nation. But look at the student records, look at the study center records and make sure everything is in order. Um, because too often we get to the end of a program, they've been studying with MINTS for four years and they want that degree. And then we discover that things are all messed up and need to be corrected. Um, so, so just jumping back into that with Norlin, it's interesting listening to Norlin, and I think Abraham and others on the call will recognize this. I think that's where we were in Africa about three years ago, because we ended up having this problem where guys were coming to graduate and we go, what have you been doing? You haven't been following the procedures and protocols. And I think that we've been a lot better. It's just taken us time, right? To catch up. There are blind spots and those blind spots are things that I've actually got, got on my notes to address. But you know, you'll catch up. You'll catch up. That's what I'm saying to you, right? And, and there are some interesting, I mean, Norland's got this fascinating opportunity in Pakistan to be able to help in Pakistan. And right now they're not operating according to our standards. But what we're saying to them is by the end of the five years, we want you to be there. Because if not, we've just excluded them from the whole of Mints. And that's really, you know, we we're running, we want to bless the church. So how do we get them to where they need to go? And that might take a number of years, but we just need to keep absolutely hammering them to get there. Are you talking, or are we saying that the MOUs are basically on a country level rather than a local level? What does the country accept as academic level? Because I know, you know, in Kenya, yeah. it's one level and South Africa is another level. And Same that's level. reciprocal, reciprocal acceptance. Is that what we're talking about? Um, I think with the MOUs, we're talking more about organization, organization, okay. right? Um, not simply local study centers, but, but organizations that want to work with MITS in some way. Okay. Um, yeah, and just to follow that up, when we're drafting these MOUs, they draft differently depending on the circumstances. So uh, let me, if I was to do an MOU in Kenya, I wouldn't do it without Abraham being involved at some level, right? because Abraham is the country coordinator. He's got a proven track record. Uh, and, and so Abraham would be copied in to that discussion right from the get-go. Um, we've, we've not used, okay, so, so how often have we used MOUs? Because we don't have a legal relationship with these groups, it's not essential. But what we do want is we don't want expectations to be marred by the fact that we didn't put something down in writing right in the beginning. And that's the major function. So for example, Carla and I, we had to hammer out what was, what was gonna work, what wasn't gonna work. And on the strength of that, we created an MOU so that everybody understands what the, um, so everybody understands what the, uh, the, the, the mutual relationship is. And that's the main value that I see out of the MOUs. Um, I mean, now the Spanish side, the Spanish side run on a five-year basis, and that's why five years has come. They do a review every five years. Do you think this is working or do you not think this is working? And, you know, from a, from a MINS perspective, we'll know fairly quickly and, and we'll talk about audits. I want to talk about audits. It's on my list of things to do. Um, but we'll know fairly quickly whether they're playing the game or not. And in which case, you know, there'll be a couple of difficult conversations. And it's like, guys, if you're just not prepared to do it, we can't validate any of this. So we need to move on. Um, so it's, does, it's not a sort of a lock you down, from my perspective, and again, Norland might do this differently, and that's fine, that's quite legitimate, but from my perspective as the English guy in the Africa context and that, you know, for example, I mean, Jack and I have worked together, we've, we've been doing stuff and fixing stuff and changing stuff as we go along, it's an ongoing process because South Africa is extremely complex with what they need and what Jack needs, right? And we're always having to adjust that, but I have the relationship with Jack, Jack has the relationship with me, so we'll figure it out. You know, somehow we'll, we'll get to yes and we'll figure it out. Um, but that's based on our relationship, it's not based on people's paper. Jack, do you wanna just jump in on that? Do you wanna just say anything on that? Yeah, uh, I guess it's just, you know, um, 
the big question is who issues the qualification. So if if you have a, 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 a other instance that uh, issues the qualification, they take the responsibility. But if uh, Mince issues the qualification, such as in our case, uh, obviously Mince carries that responsibility and the, the center or the actual group uh, just needs to realize the entire process and how that works. So in South Africa, uh, you are not allowed to, or you may not um, say you grant degrees if you're not registered with the Department of Education. Um, and uh, say for instance, I want to start a Mince center in South Africa, that actual center needs to be registered and accredited uh, with the department, um, even though uh, MINS uh, issues the qualification. So uh, we, we as a group, we have registered with the government, uh, but that just registers our center. It doesn't accredit the qualification. So uh, we do have governmental oversight but um, at the end of the day, uh, the actual qualification still comes from Mint. So I know South Africa can be very tricky, uh, but uh, when it comes to education and specifically students traveling from one country to a different country, we just had a, a situation with Eric now and one of our students going to Canada. Um, you know, there are there's some transmissibility. So, yeah. I think these things just needs to be fleshed out before you know they uh, there are a few issues uh, uh, all of these agreements really just helps and uh, but as 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 Julian also said you know just to have a good relationship with the leadership I think that that helps a lot so uh, you never know what curveballs you find along the way specifically in a ministry setting um but yeah um yeah, I think I think most of what we do can be sorted very easily. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, uh, Jack. And I think uh, both the MOUs and the five-year agreements really aren't meant to restrict. Um, they're just meant to define exactly what that relationship is, and it may be different uh, depending on the organizations or depending on the, the study centers themselves. Um, even the country that you're in um, has unique challenges, right? So, so just to follow up, I mean, another alternative way of looking at this is what we've done in the, the communist countries is we just simply said, well, we're not going to register with the government, but uh, because they're not looking for anything on a domestic level, right? Because with Jack, there's a relationship with his students, and then there's a relationship with the government. In the communist countries, of course, we just say, well, fine, we're running a center. And we could do that anywhere in the world because we're not claiming to do anything different. You just, we're not charging, right? When you end up with a quasi sort of charging corporate thing, then, you know, that's what makes it a little bit more complicated, for example, in the situation with Jack, which, 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 is, which, which means that he's got to, you know, pay more than one piper, right? Um, but that doesn't stop us in other places just saying, hey, because, and, I, and Greg said it well uh, a while ago when we were talking about this whole new thing about excellence and degree qualifications. Uh, he said, our accreditation is sufficient for what we want it for, which is the training of men for the ministry, right? And I think that that was well said because that's our root. That's our bread and butter. Anything else is, is gravy, right? Um, but but that's our root. Um, okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to just comment on that? Um, no, just maybe a, a, a comment again about the academic audits. Um, yeah. That, well, I, yeah. Good. Oh, you're gonna. Well, I've got a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Got a whole thing on that. Yeah, I got a whole deal on that. So. Okay. Well, uh, just a, a summary comment then. Um, in in my estimation we need to be looking at student records and the study center records and we need to make sure that they are in order in some way because um, that's going to come back to bite us if, if we don't and so i think an annual academic audit is appropriate i don't know that julian and i need to make all of them i think uh, country coordinators can do some of these academic audits um, but somebody outside of this uh, outside of the study center should go and look at the at the records and make sure that they are in order. And we have kind of a, a, a format of some questions to ask, um, but really any question you have, uh, you should follow up on if you're doing an academic audit. So, so, so just just um, building on this and, and sort of the, the the major heading that I've got 
of which every question underneath flows, right? Is this need for us to sort of expand our quality as we go on, right? Not necessarily so much quality. The quality in the courses is fine and getting better and it'll get better, you know. But the quality of how we are um, sort of doing the administration on the back end. Um, and the reason for that is there's a number of reasons for this. Um, one is just simply that we expanded so fast that we've just, we've just been stretched, right? So it's just like, okay, we, we're doing something new. We're not going to turn somebody away. So we're getting stretched. The other is that in Africa, and I'm guessing that over the next 10 years, it is going to end up in pretty much all jurisdictions. I'm guessing, who knows? But in Africa, there is a massive drive now that all ministers need degrees. For example, in Rwanda, within the next two years, you will not be able to be a minister of a church without a degree qualification. Okay, now that is based not on they hate the church. <laughs> Indirectly, that's where it's going to go. But it's based on um, they're worried about all these charlatans running around and they're worried about all these people who are you know, claiming to be this, that, and the next thing, and they want to try and clamp down on it. So the state is trying to clamp down on it. Um, and so... You know, as we go forwards, this is something that we're going to bump into more and more and more. And so part of what we're looking at as we go forwards is, is just how can we be more excellent in our documentation, in our, um, or more, you know, in our documentation and all of those things, um, you know, our manuals and things like that, so that when the crunch comes, we actually are setting the standard for, hey, you guys want to know what we do? Here it is. Are, are you, you know, for example, I mean, we are known in, Ken, not in Kenya so much, but we are known in, in Malawi as having a superior e education at, at all levels, right? Not just theological education. It's, it's now become a known fact that you want a really good degree, you've got to miss, which is problematic for other reasons, right? Because now there are people who just, you know, want to come for, for other issues, right? Um, and that's where we're having to fight to keep the focus on ministerial training or, but, but I know that a lot of our graduates are, uh, are teachers, which is fine. And that's why Carl is involved. A lot of our graduates um, have gone into civil service and it's just, it's just recognized in the country now that MINS is producing a better quality degree. Uh, we, we've had the same thing happen in Zambia indirectly. It's beginning to happen in Zambia uh, I was down at the Mint Center. I was down at the Mint Center. Pascal took me down to the Mint Center. And uh, the guy said, well, I knew Mint's, who was running the Mint Center, I knew Mint's was good because when they asked me to go and teach at this university and they were going to pay me and everything, I looked at the course and they'd stolen the Mint's course. <laughs> so, so the university had just stolen the Mint's course and was offering it as one of their courses and, and running it in that particular way. All right. But the, the point, and, and so, all right, fine, you do that, but I'm jolly well going to advertise that we'll do it for ministers for free. And, and, and you know, we're not going to, you know, and actually, if we did, if I ever run into them, that we would, would, would have to speak to them about them, you know, stealing our stuff. Um, so, so, again, this, this idea of trying to move towards more and more excellence in, in, in our back end, in our processes, in our manual documents, which keep being updated, in our catalog. Um, we, we're going to also go through all of the courses. And again, I've got a whole range of things that I want to talk about. But we're going to go through all of the courses and we're actually going to make some changes about what we are accepting and how we accept courses onto our website, right? Um, what qualifications we're going to have for course, course qualifications, right? And, um, and so that's one of them. So I've got a whole bunch of things. The audit uh, is something that we're, we're pushing harder and harder um, on making sure that we can audit. And we'll talk about that. Uh, student writing. Uh, Craig Moby is not on this call anymore, but, but, but we are pushing students to, to write better right from the get-go. So one of the things that we want to increase um, is and Nora and I were talking about this as a potential thing. One of the things is we want a course or the manual, but of course works for me, that they need to take by the 10th or the 11th, because you can get through the certificate. Yeah, fine, we'll help you. By the 11th course, we want a course on how to write courses or how to write your assignments, 
how to write and write an exegetical how to write an exegetical paper how to write this so that from the certificate level and flowing upwards we have we're capturing them the level that they want and then eventually when they do get to the ma thesis level it, it should be absolutely straightforward and second nature all right so that's an illustration of what i'm talking about about trying to force those things into our system and it's going to be difficult to do but we'll do it Carla. from an educator's point of view if you want good writing it needs to start with the very first course and, and just and <laughs> Listen, I, I, I accept that the reason why in my mind, and again, I haven't discussed this, and we, but this is the beginning of a discussion, right? right. The, the reason why I'm, I'm reticent to do that is let's say we got Mozambique where the guys are like, you know, knocking two rocks together, you know, but if, if you don't, you get a certificate. Them, right, if you don't push them at least some somewhat, if, if they don't, if there's not some part of their score, that's about their their grammar. They're they're not going to learn. They're not going to take their paper to somebody else to get help or to get it edited. We encourage them to have somebody help them so that they are getting tutored and learn before they turn it in. Mozambique is another level. It, you oh. know, what I mean, there are a few places that we're operating that I don't want. I don't. You know, this is the balance. Don't want to discourage right? them. I do not. They would kill it. Right. It's never going to happen in Mozambique. In which case, we close down Mozambique. And I don't want to do that. Even if we're at the moment, all we're doing is bringing Bibles to people who have no Bibles. Right. right. Where this yeah. ends up, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but if, you, if if we're if we're if we're thinking they're going to make it to the master's level. Oh yeah, that's. There's no that, better that's, place to start than at the yeah. beginning, at least. Because once they get those bad habits, it's so hard to break. You know, we weren't, I don't think I wasn't strict enough with some of our students in the first course for that same reason. I didn't want them to get discouraged. But now getting them to be conscious that it matters is hard because I let some slip by. You know? And I accept that it's it, it just, I, you know, this is the thing where we, we, we've got to be careful. Whatever rules we bring in, doesn't mm -hmm. end up killing off certain places which are never going to get past the certificate. Right. And I'm okay and with that. That's where you have to, you know, your whoever leads your audience. Should, should be familiar with your people and they get discouraged. But just from the educator point of view, yeah. if we let bad habits grow, go, they, they're hard to correct. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right, Carl. I think uh, we can probably all agree that the earlier, the better. Um, and, and that might vary between study centers. Um, right, we want, right. We want to catch it early. Right. And so that's, sorry. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that we're, we're beginning to look at. Well, let me give you a for instance. So, you know, when I'm looking at this, the, the quality of the guys that I've got potentially in Addis Ababa, one of the things that I did was I contracted Craig and said, hey, within the first three courses, would you be prepared to do a Zoom about good writing? Because that's, you know, Craig's very into that. And, and he said, yeah. But that's not actually a course. That's just going to be a side show where he says, this is what we want. This is what we expect. Um, and it will be, it'll differ from place to place because, um, you know, there, there are places, I mean, we've got these great Sudanese brothers that Abraham Kogo is working with. And, you know, if we came out of the gate like that with some of these guys, it's going to be too much. But it, it, we agree as early as possible when we think that it's appropriate and 99% of the time it's going to be appropriate unless there's quite clearly reasons not to. Okay, so we're going to work on this. You know, I'm just thinking oh, we've got a guy in Turkey right now who's actually written a very good course about how to write courses. We've got Jumbe has actually got some stuff that he's written. We've got uh, Alan van der Poel has written about English, which is the corollary to that, by the way. If we do a course about writing, and I'm really talking about formatting and stuff like that. That's where I am in my mind about the writing. Alan's got a course, which I also want in how to write an, a simple English sentence. And we need that fairly early on as well, right? So, you know, I, I, I see us building those things in and, and then we'll have to communicate that down. When we have a real clear picture about what we want and how we're gonna articulate it, we'll build it in. Right now it's voluntary. If they wanna do, how to learn an English sentence, it's voluntary. But I think we start, we're gonna to start to make it less voluntary <laughs> earlier on. I, I would agree. <laughs> Alan, Jim, any comment? Yeah, Jim, Alan. When I was teaching in prison, I required every time they wrote a reading report to list the source 
they were reporting on in bibliography form. Mm -hmm. And after about three times, teaching them bibliography was no longer a problem. Right, and that's where we need to go, right? So we need, we need, we'll, we'll try and standardize. It was an interesting discussion on standardization this morning where something that is, is obvious, but I hadn't thought about was, was what, are the, what, are the, what are the MLA equivalent standards in, in Kenya, you know? You know? So, so all of a sudden now we've got to, we're gonna to have to think very carefully and we're gonna to have to come up with a protocol at some point and if they don't have a, a thing, what do we do? And, uh, and that just complicates our whole discussion about, you know, Neil's always been about be consistent. It's a little bit wide for me. Um, so I'd, I'd rather we try to have some sort of better ruling, but that's something we're gonna have to discuss because what they need in Kenya is not necessarily what they need in South Africa, is not necessarily what they need in, in, in Russia, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so we just need to think this through real carefully before we come out with, this is our preferred method. We've, we've kicked this around for ages, but it was a helpful discussion for me this morning. Just, just one thought on that is that most, a lot of seminaries you go to have a, a just a little packet guide on right from when you start. This is what we expect mm -hmm. as far as your style, APA or MLA or whatever, but they, but they also give it for theology, basically. Um, but if you go to Almost any seminary has little packets, or at least that I think. So, so to give you an example, I mean, let's say Craig Moby, because this has already happened, right? So, so Craig, because Craig's from South Africa, he tends to think in terms of South African writing styles, right? And he tends to bring those on. And so he's dealing with students, and a lot of them are actually ending up doing South African writing styles. And, and I mean, he's not on the call, unfortunately, otherwise that would be part of the discussion. But the problem with that, on the one hand, it's better academic, and so that's good. The problem with it, is it appropriate for Malau? Is it appropriate for Addis Ababa? You know what I'm saying? I mean, or are they going to be using something which is so radically different that it might not be? And I, we, we just a have- A lot to of them are universal, though. I mean, there's quite a few that are, the, the APA is fairly universal in education. For my field, education across the, the, the nations, APA is fairly standard. Yeah, I mean APA for education documents journals is fairly standard, but not I don't know about theology. That's just education. So, right. Um, you know that's something we're going to have to wrestle with, but we it's live and we're wrestling with it, right? And we're going right. to have to just think it through. I mean, I just you know it's obvious, and I just missed it until Craig until somebody said something this more. Oh well, it just it just came out of the discussion. I went, well, why didn't I see that? You know that because we might actually be doing some of these students a disservice if we're training them in a South African writing style in Addis Ababa when they actually might need to present their thesis to somebody at some point for co-validation at some point. Yeah. Um, and so and we just we just matter. have to figure we just have to figure that out. Okay. And we, the, we're going to do it. It's university. A, yeah, check it with the university in each country and see. Right, but I don't want to get like that either because, you know, the flip side of this is we end up with papers that look a million different ways from Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. And so and so when we then say, well, this is mince, then it, it actually looks, it might look different. So we, we've got to balance those two because we go back to, hey, we're trying to create this really professional level um, which we can then take and say, this is Mintz, this is our standard, we've been doing this for 10 years, you know, basically don't bother us, leave us alone, right? I mean, that's right. really, you know, accredit us or leave us alone, you know what I mean? This is, this is what we're doing. I think one of the things you're trying to say, uh, uh, Julian, is that we need to be able to recognize a degree as Mintz and not have it so overshadowed by uh, the country's requirements. I mean, Mintz is Mintz. I mean, why, why are we going through all this trouble? And and so there is a balance between what, what I think Carla is trying to say and what you're trying to say, but what, what distinguishes mints? And that's where the rub, rub comes, I think. And we really have to work on that. Sure. Thanks. Um, just, just to follow up, to encourage people, um, mints students, uh, we have one in Kenya who is going to the Netherlands to do an MA at, I forget which one, but it was a serious university at the Netherlands um, because of contacts there. But that was an MA student who's now going over to the Netherlands and she's been accepted into that program based upon what Mintz has been producing, right? 
So that's that's just that's encouraging to us. We've got um, Craig Moby had a student. I mean, she was a she was a Philadelphia student, right? Um, what was her name? Um, her name Rika? is what? Rika. Rika, yeah, Rika Rula. Yeah. Um, she she's she went on to do a master's and in, in, in to do a PhD at Potchefstroom in South Africa, right? Yeah, she's doing a doctorate now. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, so you did a master's to do doctorate, right? So they, because, you know, sometimes they'd let you straight into the doctoral program, but a lot of the time they'll do masters as a sort of leverage to get into the, it's the same thing. It's just a step, right? Yep. Um, and so, so just to encourage you that we have had students who go through and are operating at that sort of level, right? Yes. And, and so it, it's existing. Now, this, this brings me to another whole range of, uh, a range of issues that, that, that are popping up all over all over Africa, and I'm not quite sure how to address these, but we've sort of covered a bit of the student writing and we, we, we're dealing with that. Um, so, so let's just talk about, about what we're trying to do. Um, one of the things, we've got nine students right now who in Malawi are petitioning to do a doctor of ministry. And I mean, that's a huge number, right? I mean, and, uh, I, from memory, because we, I mean, I had to get hold of Craig and say, how much time do you have, Craig? How much time do I have? How can we help these guys get through this program? Also, we need to know that the people that were selected for the demon are worthy candidates because we just can't take that on. And I'll give you an illustration of an unworthy candidate. Um, so I had a guy um, write on to Peter and, uh, I, 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 uh, Norland, uh, not Norland, Alan, Alan's familiar with this because uh, he and I interacted on it. Um, he did a two Peter. And as we got into two Peter, the, 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 the critique came back of his course was this really wasn't a two Peter course. And I've actually had one on, I actually had one on um, Joshua, which was the same. It was not an expositional course because that's what we want. Right, the MA thesis is an expositional. What the guy did in two Peter was run a comparison between Peter and Jude, basically, and he'd obviously got that from somewhere, right? Because these books, you know, if you go to the New Testament books, they they'll lump new Peter, you know, they'll lump two Peter and Jude together. That's that's quite common in theological circles, right? So that's where he got it from. That was the idea, and eventually I came to the point when I worked through it with him that I said past but not published. And there's there's three things that we're looking at right now. We can do a fail. We can do a pass, not publish. And again, none of this is codified. So this is being codified, which we need to codify, right, in our written document. And then we get a pass, publish. And the reason why it was a pass, not publish, was he'd done enough work, but it wasn't exegetical in the way that we wanted. The English was not high enough standard. And part of the problem that we have in Africa, and Carla, you're going to run into this, this is actually a very deep rooted language issue where I had a, well, let me just give you a, an illustration of a conversation. When I go and speak to the guys and they say, where are you from? And they'll say, oh, how is it over there? Now, this is mainly a Southern thing, not so much with Abraham. And I would like Abraham's comment on this. And we have a brother from Sierra Leone on as well, right? But, but um, they'll say, how is it over there? Now, when they first started doing that, I just assumed they didn't know where I was from. So they weren't being specific. And then, you know, I spent a couple of days in the car chatting to these guys when we were traveling around Zambia. And I brought it up when we were traveling around Zambia. And I said, why do people say over there? Is it because they don't know where I'm from? Or is it just the way the language is very unspecific? And they said, our language is unspecific. Our whole language based. Now, this is Chichewa into English in, 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 in the thing. So, so, of course, with theology, it's got to be precise, right? I mean, theology has to be precise. So the second ground that I rejected the guy was his English wasn't good enough and it wasn't precise. And, 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 and one of the things of that is he wasn't coming out with any clear reform statements anywhere in his document because he was just imprecise. Now, I don't know whether he didn't, he didn't come up with the reform things because he was imprecise or he didn't come out with reformed things because he wasn't reformed. You know, I just couldn't, it was a generic, you know, it was a generic in the middle paper and, and that, that was what it was. So, 
so so there was the, the the first ground was it wasn't exegetical the second was the english was a problem and then thirdly we had we had potential issues with the theology right we just didn't know okay um so on those three grounds i said we'll pass you you get your ma but we're not going to publish this so we emailed back and um and or actually the country coordinator emailed back and said i would like to know what he needs to do because he wants to go on and do a demon right he wants to go on and do a demon and i basically emailed back and said i said no he would have to redo everything as far as i'm concerned the only way he can move from where he is is for him to scratch it and go back to absolute the beginning and resubmit a complete new paper and i, I i'm too busy and i don't have the time for it right now right so the, the answer is, is no, and that was my reasoning. Now that caused a pretty big shakeup in the system in Malawi, because now they're all saying, oh, does that apply to me? And we want it to go on and we want to do this and that and the next thing. A couple of things to say about that. One is, uh, again, I, I don't speak for Norlin, but I'm not, in the, I'm not in the degree making factory, right? We are building men up to be ministers. In one sense, well, let me just give you an illustration. Uh, John Marshall was a minister of mine um, for many years in England. He was one of the more brilliant men that I've ever met. Just quite clearly brilliant. He was offered a PhD at Oxford because he was at Oxford anyway, and he was offered a PhD in Oxford. And he turned it down and he said, because I couldn't see it would make me a better minister. Right? He said, I couldn't get I, I can get the doctorate, but I can't see that it's going to make me a better minister. And on that principle, I'm not interested necessarily in, in handing out and working with people to get doctorates. Um, you know, I want them to be ministers. You know, and I know Carla's got her own side, you know, you know, there's more to it than that. But so I, I'm not in that basis. Um, and then secondly, we needed to we we need a, a consistent way to weed people out on the way through because the doctoral level is where though we, we are developing our courses and course writers. So the MA level is give us a great MA exegetical paper that I know that you can handle the word of God before you leave. That's from a ministerial point of view. And then that does not mean that they're going to be published any longer. In the early days, we published them all because we just didn't have any courses, right? So we started publishing and we just thought, we're going to change it now. And over the next year, I hope we'll be going through all of our courses and deciding what to pass, not publish, what might be taught by a guy because he wrote it and it's okay. And we want to develop local teachers. What's going to be a pass and publish and therefore officially goes up on the website. And then what's going to be one of our cores? What are going to be core courses? Because we also want to hive down core courses. So it's, it's a balance of encouraging them to do it, but also trying to protect the product if you follow me. Um, so anyway, let me throw that out. I, I mean, I, I, Abraham, you're sitting here and then I've got a whole bunch of people who, who want to say, but let me just ask Abraham. I mean, I'm just, look, none of this is in place right now, right? These are things that we're hoping to do over the next, over the next year. Um, and we're thinking about doing, but it's going to take us a year to do it. So, Abraham. Yes. Comments, um, thoughts, observations. Yeah, um, as, as far as I've heard you talking of, um, of the, the, the lady that she's going to the Netherlands, that was Jen Omemo. Yeah, whom, uh, she's our student in uh, Bumala. So she's planning to go for further studies in the Netherlands. And... Uh, it's encouraging, uh, isn't it? It's encouraging. Yeah, it's, a student from... it's, it's really encouraging. Yeah. Because when she applied, uh, she got that. And um, it's really encouraging us as a team. Um, again, uh, you've talked about the, the theology and, and the language itself. Uh, one of the things that I've realized is that uh, most of our students, um, they don't know much on how to write and uh, especially when it comes to writing skills. So maybe that is another challenge that uh, some of them, they are not conversant with the technology, especially with the computers. And sometimes typing is another problem. So those are some of the things that I've seen. And also the language and uh, the background of their theology is another aspect that it really um, 
uh, gives us maybe some of the challenges, as you've said. So I believe that those are some of the things that I've, I've observed. Yeah, and I always recognize when somebody's talking to me about theology in English and it's their second language, they're probably doing a far better job in Chichewa or they're probably doing a far better job in Swahili. You, you know what I mean? I, I, I just can't judge that. I, don't ask, I mean, I, my, my second language is Afrikaans and Dutch, but can I do theology in Dutch and Afrikaans? I can't do theology in Dutch and Afrikaans, not, 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 a, not a hope. So, you know, we've got to recognize that and also recognize that we don't know what we don't know. The, so, you know, so those are all of the balancing, balancing aspects, right? Yeah. Um, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, Alan. I think I have, we brought this up before, at least I have, and I don't know if the, um, if Mintz has taken a stand on it. I'm wondering about English competency tests. And I found one online that I sent to you, Julian, and it um, basically had three levels. You take the test in three levels, and each level, I think, had an A and a B, so that, in effect, there were six tests. And um, on the third level, in B, I was making mistakes. They were based, in some cases, on idioms I didn't quite understand. But I know that in the earlier levels, they were uh, trying to weed out issues that I face in every African paper I read. And I just wonder if we could take something like that and say, you know, to get anything beyond a bachelor's, somebody has to pass this test at level two something like that, a concept like that. Now, Alan, I, I sent Alan, I sent Alan, well, again, Carla, we gotta be so careful here because you can't kill the golden goose as well, right? So, but, but uh, so on that specific, and, and, and we'll discuss it at master's level, um, Alan, but at the DMIN level, I sent you the paper, you sent it back. You're one draft behind from, because of my problem, right? you are one drop behind of where I've got to in my discussions with Craig and other people. And okay. on that, on that, there's a competency test is one of the criteria for getting onto the demon, right? So there is a competency test of getting onto the demon. But again, just we just have to bear in mind that, and do we run that down to an MA level? We might, okay? But, we but might. the thing is, we don't have to do it as, right up front as exclusionary like this is going to keep you out but we, we could do it at, at the bachelor level at a this is where you should be if you're not you need to get help because we're expecting them to work in english we need to help them get there and Agreed. identifying your weaknesses is a good stage to grow that's so, the way this thing has to be solved because that's absolutely yeah otherwise it just becomes exclusionary them. It's a why you can't do something rather than saying, okay, here's a problem. How do we move you forward to be able to do it? Right. Now, right. that's number one. That also, though, is reflecting my weakness in dealing with Africa is I don't speak Swahili. This guy might be able to write a doctoral level in Swahili, and I don't know. You know what I'm but saying? But he's not getting his degree in Swahili. And well, that, eventually, we do have, we do eventually, have a eventually, I mean, I've got Russian guys who are writing in Russian supervised by somebody that I trust in Russian, and mm -hmm. I, am doing, I end up putting it through deep L or something like that and doing a cursory run through to flag anything I find, you know? And, and that's where we need to go. That's eventually where we need to go, but we're not there yet. So again, agreed. I think we're all agreed. We've got yeah. to do this in a way which is positive and building. Hey, this is a weakness. How can we move you on? Actually, it's our weakness. Part of, it, part of it's our weakness that we are an English-based group in most of the world. We're not in, you know, we're not, we're, we're, not in, we're not in Nepal, we're not speaking Nepalese, and we're not speaking whatever. So it's, you know, so long as we go at this with a real understanding that it's, it's something we need, but it's also our weakness, and we need a lot of wisdom and we need to communicate that. Otherwise, it just looks like we're excluding people because your English is lousy and you might be the best things in sliced bread. 
you know what for I mean? Most, for most of them that I've encountered, they 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 want to learn English and they want to do better. And that's, and, and that's true. In, that's true. That that's, English that's, is their official language. That, that's true in Africa, but when you get further out, I think you might find it's different. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, when you when you when you're moving into, for example, Russian. Right. Why should they, they learn Russian? Russian? You know, I mean, why should they learn English at one level? I mean, the only value we, we've got a guy who's brilliant in Russian and and he's got all the right books and he's moving them forwards. And I'm really excited about that. And I trust him enough. He's doing his demon. He's done three or four courses on his demon. And I'm soon going to get and then I have to trust him. Do you know what I'm saying? He, he is right. basically going to be the academic face of what goes on. I, I can see his weaknesses. I can see his strengths. We've talked other people he's so academic that we're not going to get any practical courses out of him and he's not going to in, you know he's not going to sort of engender that but okay yeah. so that's that's a good, yeah. that's a good that, thing that, that contextualizes good. the discussion right 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 um um i accept carla's comments may i raise only one more issue or question how do we communicate to our african writers my question is, um, at first I started to do track changes and even explained how to use it, but I'm convinced that they were intimidated by it or didn't know how to use it. So I never got a reply from some students. Then I decided to insert in the text red letter comments and give them my instruction that way and then say to them, uh, once you've responded to this, please just delete the red and now we have your document. And um, I'm not getting responses from that approach either. Why don't you address it? We have, we have two people who, one whom you're directly supervising. Isaac, welcome. Isaac is from Uganda. Isaac, welcome. Why don't you address it directly with Isaac and you can address it to Abraham and ask them what their, what their potential solution to this is because uh, Abraham has written, was it two, or are you on your third or your second? Your third, you're on your third or your fourth? You've done two, right? And Isaac has already done, what's Isaac done? Isaac, can you hear us? Hey, yes, brother. I can hear you. Okay. I have done for three yeah. courses. Now, I'm sorry I, I joined you late. Yeah, but uh, uh, it is very interesting, and I like uh, actually what uh, Alan was uh, talking about. But my suggestion is this, in regard to that, why can't we uh, make writing a thesis a compulsory course on a bachelor's level before someone uh, goes on a master's? Because if we make it to be a compulsory course, uh, uh, writing a text to be a, a compulsory course on a bachelor's level, then by the time a student does his joins the masters, he has the experience, he knows how to follow those track changes, he knows how to use that. So that's my word. Uh, instead of having that uh, anyone who has a bachelor's should go and do a master's, I think that sh shouldn't be good. Uh, we'll let that's Alan speak. That's really helpful, and I'm going to let Alan speak to that. Um, I, I think uh, we do need to instruct in writing um, at the master's level, but I think I would rather have that um, in each course. We have an exegetical paper or a, a historical paper or some sort of writing assignment that students need to do, and it's at a smaller level, maybe 12 to 15 pages. Um, where we can uh, really drill down and look at sentence by sentence of uh, what are you doing in your writing. And so I think at the bachelor's level, um, we, can, we can do a lot to improve someone's writing just through those um, smaller papers and, and wait for the courses until you're a master's, master's level. There's that approach. You could also say, A, I, we, we've talked about this, right? So we're building this in right from the get-go. And, and we could actually have a course which was write a 15 page paper on a book of the Bible, a, a mini thesis at bachelor's level and, and validate the mini thesis at bachelor's level. And that, 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 might, that, might, um, that might be a stepping stone, A, that they could step it up if required. And maybe then we can offer them the masters. 
It might also show them how much work it is <laughs> so that they might not be quite so keen to run on to it. Um, and it, it would be a, a potential teaching thing. I, do we want to even think about that at some point? Um, so we have a course just says, this is your 15 page exegesis course. That's what well, you've got I, to do. I mean, we give more structure. Than that. Yeah, actually I'm working on a course. Um, okay. How to write an exegetical paper. And the paper would be an exegetic paper. Right. So, so, so that's, so that's something that we could build into the bachelor's level um, as a, as a separate course, right? Is that, again, thoughts. I mean, we've got Isaac here. We've got, um, we've got Isaac. I and mean, look, all we're doing at the moment is, is talking about things. We've got a lot of work to do as we, we roll these things out over the next couple of years, but Sorry, Abraham and, and Isaac. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say something there. Um, when you talk of uh, exegetical paper, I think that is so important uh, on a bachelor's level because, you know, we've been asking our students to write an uh, essay. So if they, can, if they can learn to type and uh, write a good paper in their bachelor's level, that could help them as they move on to, to the master's level. So we can't say maybe uh, they, they, they do a, a project or a thesis when they are doing the, the, the bachelor's because at the end of the day, we need, a, we need the project 66. So if they do it on bachelor's level, I believe that cannot make um, a good sense on master's level. So my suggestion is that we emphasize this exegetical paper, as you've said, maybe 15 pages and we examine that. I think that would be helpful. Okay. To, to, does anybody want to speak to, to Alan's question about how corrections, when, when, when somebody is correcting a paper and putting in red marks, the, is that effective? Wasn't that um, your question, Alec? Is, is, that, a, is that an effective that, way that, Well, let's, I mean, we, well, the, I, I need, I need uh, well, the two people that we've got right in front of us, I mean, Isaac, would you like to speak to that? Because you're the how first. About, yeah. How about Donald? The I see Donald there as well. Let, let me speak to that. Let me speak to that. I like those red marks that, uh, that Alan Fatabo used to do because at the end of the day, you know, it's like I, I like it. So I know this is where I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to do correction. So with me, I, I, I take it uh, positively. And uh, I, I, do, I usually do that even as I mark papers for some students as well. So I'm learning I think the professor. So. That is good. Actually, at first, I didn't know how to use those tracking well. But then when Alan explained to me, uh, I, I, I caught up. I caught up on that. But then the best actually that I found is when he began putting some remarks using the red letters. With that one, I knew what if it is, like he said, once it is, you, you fall that, then you can delete that. That is very easy. But then the tracking is easier now because now I'm used to it. It depends. I thought I think that you, in the case, say, if I write a paper and maybe someone is reading it, is making some comments, it would be better if he asked me, which one would you like to use? Is it should I use the in-text whatsoever, a red color then? You, 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 you correct your work based on that or you use the, tra the tracking one. Now, if that is the case, then it makes it easier for the student to, to write and to correct his work. Alan, thoughts? Yeah. Alan, your thoughts? No, um, I like that suggestion. And um, you see, when I'm teaching face-to-face, I can um, have a dialogue, but when it's over the ocean and only email, um, the dialogue kind of dies. At least it's it's not easy to have an ongoing discussion when um, a student might answer in ten days. Um, you know, it's it's kind of stretched out. But I like what Isaac said about. Um, finding out from the student how he would like me to address him and work with him. I think that's a good suggestion. Can we, can we also, now that we have Zoom running a lot better, can we also have that direct dialogue via Zoom a lot more where we, I mean, 
I mean, I mean, look, Abraham, I know you, you've got your bundle, <laughs> you're ready to go. I, I know Isaac's probably more challenged getting the bundle than you are, but he's got his bundle and he's ready to go. Uh, is this realistic with some of our other students that we say, if you're going to do this, you've got to have a one-on-one -on -one with your professor. We can do this by Zoom, who's going to help you to understand more and more. Yeah, that, that could be helpful. Uh, when you buy bundles, it's okay. You can be on, uh, on, on tied or, uh, with a student and uh, that will be okay. So that, that's okay because you buy bundles and uh, you move on. Uh, uh, unfortunately, mine is almost running up. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bundles is just data bundles, right? Um, uh, sorry, you, you had some Stan, you had something that you you you, you sort of interjected and, and you had something earlier, Stan, that you about this. Remind me, what did I say? <laughs> I thought you said something like ask John or something like that. I oh I, um, listen, other people. Yeah, Donald is on as well he's muted but i was wondering what he had to say about this john Donald. we haven't met uh so welcome brother uh you're sierra leone correct yes yes indeed good good day to all of you uh, well, i am just wondering what I your am, comments I am from sierra leone are, yeah what are your comments about what we have been talking about <laughs> Yes, I, I was trying to follow up on all the comments and discussions, and also with regards to even the, um, the documents um, that you guys want to prepare so that we know how the African countries will fit in. But um, for us in Sierra Leone, we, we are starting, we are just starting, and if I would say, um, it's like what we've done with regards to means, we, we started with the Holy Spirit and I think we've done something on ethics and um, another thing, you know. So, um, we, uh, we lost you for a second there, brother. You faded out. Sierra Leone has and come on. Want to to, to bachelor, um, the bachelor's program, and from the bachelor's program to a master's program, because we we we, we are st still struggling in understanding what or how the program would work in Sierra Leone, you know. Um, so that's the that's the reason why I was trying to follow up on on this discussion. Uh, for you, most of this is new and different, and Bob Davis will be helping you. Um, and, and we will work closely with Bob. Uh, I know that it's, it's very new for you guys in Sierra Leone right now. So we're, we're going to be, we're going to be working with you. You guys are just coming in. So what we're discussing are problems that we've seen because we've been working in Africa for 10 years. And, um, and so these are just some of the sort of advanced discussions, if you follow me. Um, but we'll, We'll get you guys up to speed and Bob Davis will be working with you to get you up to speed, all right? Sorry for yeah, yeah. making confusion. No, 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 no. It, no that, that, that's, that's great. Um, look, we are, I uh, hate to do this, but we're gonna have to break. Um, we're gonna have to break 45 minutes. Um, and, and so if we came back, if we came back at, at 1.15, is that well it's not half an hour it's half an hour with one one what 20 past 20 past one eastern time that's 40 minutes time for 40 minutes wherever you are plus 40 minutes if you can join us then uh same link, same link. i'm actually just gonna i'm actually gonna let the screen run and i'm gonna shut down the recording and i'm just gonna let the, sh the screen run so god willing we will see you in 40 minutes time and we'll continue the discussion. I've got a bunch more stuff that I wanna bring out. Uh, this was a fairly advanced discussion, if you follow me, um, but I've got a whole bunch of stuff about co-validation and, and registrations that we, we really do need to cover. Okay.
Thank you, brothers. And I know I'm going to lose some of you. I know I'm probably going to lose Isaac and I'm um, probably going to lose Abraham because it's too late. Maybe, maybe I know you are going to lose me because uh, you are practicing maybe for what time now? Is it lunch or what? Well, for us, it's, for us, it's, it's lunch. But now with me, I'm going to bed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Brother, we're probably going to lose you and I weep that we're going to lose you, but we will be recording this and we'll put it up on the internet very, very shortly, okay? I think we just lost him. Okay, brothers, uh, I'm not going to end the conversation. I'm just going to pause the recording. I don't know if I can do it that long, but we'll do it. I'm going to pause the recording and we're going to just disappear.